one of TV's biggest and most expensive shows of all time is coming to an end. Yes, a new season of The Crown is coming and we finally have a first look at the show's final season accompanied by some powerful promo posters. Join me today as we break down these promos and what we know so far about The Crown Season 6. Now I'm bringing you weekly videos covering the best and worst of movies and television and delivering it straight to your subscription feed. So to stay up to date and support the channel be sure to hit that like button, subscribe and ring that bell to not miss a single thing. Now something we could have guessed at but has now been confirmed is that all three actresses who played Queen Elizabeth II will be returning one last time for this season, which is a great send off for all of these terrific performances. Some fans joking that we are getting a multiverse of madness for British royalty. But one thing I did not expect was to see these women come together already in the promo for the season no less. In this date announcement teaser we open on a ticking clock, a common opening shot of many teasers throughout the series. Time passing is once again relevant here as season 1 and 2's Claire Foy enters, walking the halls of the palace. Foy's dialogue smoothly transitions into season 3 and 4's Olivia Coleman, all speaking on the sacrifices made by those under the crown. The primary internal and external conflict faced by the Queen in all three time periods the show has portrayed. Which leads to the appearance of Imelda Staunton, the actress who will bring this whole series home. Out of curiosity I posted a poll asking who was your favourite performance of Queen Elizabeth and this is what you said. Claire Foy came out on top with a whopping 77%, leaving Coleman behind with 19% and not even recency bias could save Staunton with just 4%. Maybe that will change after this season though, who knows. Another surprise from these teasers was that this season will be broken up into two parts, but luckily spaced less than a month away from each other. This teaser gives us part 1's premiere date of November 16 and part 2 will be hitting our screens December 14. These parts have each been given their own poster. Let's start with part 1. Most of those familiar with the life and death of Princess Diana are aware of this famous image of the Princess of Wales holidaying in the Mediterranean weeks before her death. So seeing this image from this perspective in the poster is a hauntingly beautiful tribute. Season 5 ended its events in 1997 and Season 6 will pick up right where it left off. Obviously these few weeks will be a key time period in part 1 of the season. But how will the show handle the events of Diana's death? Well Peter Morgan, creator of the show, has confirmed that the actual accident itself will not be shown on screen. According to a source on the production team we will be seeing the car leaving the Ritz after midnight with paparazzi in pursuit. The aftermath with the British ambassador to France swinging into action with the foreign office and then the subsequent constitutional aftermath. But the dramatic advantage to this tactic will be that when the crash occurs we'll be seeing nothing but human reactions from the on-screen royals and the public. A very impactful storytelling mechanic. When we see these events from the eyes of the characters we've come to be so familiar with, the impact and shock of this event will evoke a more emotional reaction from the audience, especially those that were there to recall this day in 1997. The accident will likely occur in the opening few episodes and then the focus will shift to the funeral and the aftermath resulting from the tragedy. The reaction of Buckingham Palace to the tragedy was a target for criticism as their statements came across cold and impersonal. An intriguing point in royal history that many have a strong opinion on, royalist or not. I feel that once they've covered this time period, this will end part 1. Part 2 may then move on to further losses the royal family faced into the early 2000s. The poster for Part 2 showing a foreboding image of a lonely monarch. 2002 began with the death of the Queen's sister, Princess Margaret, who died in her sleep at age 71. This obviously being a significant loss for the Queen and the royal family as a whole. At this time though, the Queen's mother was extremely unwell, however insisted on being there for her daughter Margaret's funeral, which she was able to attend at the age of 101. Although in the weeks following the funeral, the Queen Mother died with the Queen by her bedside. After the heaviness of the events surrounding Diana, I think we as viewers will appreciate a few weeks break before entering the following time period, which is really no lighter. 
I have assumed in previous videos that the final scenes of the series will be surrounding the Queen's Golden Jubilee celebrations, marking her ascending to the throne 50 years earlier. However, my theory was recently thrown out as Netflix released this teaser image of the program for King Charles and Queen Camilla's wedding, which occurred in 2005. I guess a fitting end to the dramatisation considering the current heads of the royal family. But the exact events of the show's final episodes are still up for discussion, so what do you think? How do you think they'll end the hit show after six seasons? Let me know, I'll be down there in the comments. But if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering the best and worst of movies and television. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.